hear me? Can you hear me? Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Doug Jenkins back with a really cool video. I'm going to have fun with it. But this is all the cool plugins that I like in the box. I, you, you see my channel and you see me doing all this stuff about hardware and stuff like that. I am really impressed with a lot of plugins that have come out recently. Um, I want to go back and forth with a few things. I'm going to, you know, go toe to toe with a really, really nice, pristine EQ. Um, that was actually from a company called Better Maker, so you're going to hear that. I'm going to mess around with the MOG a little bit, but watch when I turn this off. This is nuts. Okay, so so it really changes. This thing's really cool. It's a Paltech style EQ. What I want to talk about is some of the, the things that I've come to realize are the best solution um, when it comes to EQ. I think... Um, one of the most popular EQs is called a Paltech EQ. Now it works with the curve, so you can attenuate at a certain frequency and you're boosting at another frequency. I'm going to talk about some of the EQs that I use. Um, we're going to actually, before the video starts, I want to show you, uh, I'm going to make this one inactive because it's not really one that I use. But I want to go through the ones that I use a lot. So you're seeing on screen here, this is just the actual plugin that represents the hardware. For the better maker i have been using this so much on masters um, it's just one of those eqs that just has this sound to it i think what we're all trying to achieve is is we're trying to bring the life out of a performance and if you've been engineering for a while you know what i'm talking about there's there's a certain piece of gear that does this certain thing to this certain sound and it's sought after um ssl neve api the way that they work with audio those are those are three major players in this business and they do it well um through the years i've started to realize other things like crane song and dave hill i i tip my hat to him he has such an amazing perception of understanding harmonics and how a, a board works and in his compression and the way that it works the attack and release and and with program dependent stuff like mastering sources it's it's phenomenal manly manly is another company that i've learned that just they have a sound you know i sold my very mu um because it became the day and age of people wanting me to barely touch it we have uh, a very mu over at another studio that i work out of and and i was just like dude i i really don't need it i, I keep putting it on the end but it's not really what we need because people are imparting it in the in the mix i would say strongly strongly to people that the very mu is still an amazing piece it still works wonders on on a source but is is it the first choice for me in a mastering situation now probably not so i'm going to talk about things in context today i'm going to talk about why you should think about things what you should think about and what's the actual reason for buying or reason for should i buy this eq because there's a lot of guys watching me right now that they have like this much money and that's that okay Okay. Um, let's let's get off the the whole. Do, can I afford it? Can I not afford it? Let, let's like go past that. So we're just going to talk about the actual, the art behind this. What are we getting? What's what's the sound? What's the what's the vision? What's what's the goal here? So we're going to work with uh, you know some multiple formats. We're going to work with some multiple workflows, and I'm going to talk about you know where things come in and their strengths and then their weaknesses and so forth. So. Here's the thing. So I want to talk about the actual plugins that I use a lot on a master. And then we have tracks. So we have the individual tracks. Let's see here. I'm using this really, really uh, straightforward microphone here. I, I feel like, I don't know. It sounds a little, it, it sounds okay, I guess. So anyways, I was having a little inner dialogue. Um, but what we're doing if we were going to do a stem session usually this is what it is okay now this this was just some loops put together for a video purpose but you have one two three four five six seven so in our studio i can take seven of those tracks and i can actually sum them to each individual part of this summing module that you can't see on the camera which um that's okay because that's not what we're, we're trying to show you but what's really neat about that is summing in parts of sound so when we're talking about these eqs and these plugins they all impart a sound they all work with audio different and as you get further along as an engineer you start to realize that like wow i don't really need that tone like i put it on and it actually decreased the signal i've been in mastering sessions with a professional you know artist that 
that I changed it just a little bit too much with just putting something on and, and you have to become aware that, that you can't be doing that. So um, a lot of the gear you're going to hear today are, are really cool, beneficial pieces for your studio. So let's get into it. Um, the first piece is actually from Brainworks. Brainworks is an amazing company. I used to actually not like this at all. I was like, eh, I don't like the sound of it. It's It sounds weird. But I started to realize that you have to understand that you know certain plugins certain converters certain interfaces um, we're equipped in this studio with the 10m from antelope which is phenomenal i would recommend anybody and their brother to buy one um, it's just pristine it's huge the image is amazing and you don't have to worry about your your clocking um, being the problem with your, your your eqs the first thing i noticed about we have a pure two um, we have an orion and hopefully um, we're gonna try to get something to work to get a, a Goliath so keeping keeping the uh, the positive and the faith in, in that because here's what we want to do we, you have to understand the plugins are dependent on what you're hearing through the DA and also on your processing power um, DSP power how does it work with the system can you hear it different do you incorporate summing summing became popular because now you have 16 channels of summing so your your plugin can push out the uh, DA hit the analog and you can get more out of it so think about that before I start all this video these plugins may sound different on your system that's what I'm trying to get at so the way that signal flow is one of the things that I think everybody should learn is signal flow so if I go out of the converter and then I um, so I'm hitting the the plugin I go out of the converter say 7 and 8 as you can see on the screen here which would be seven and eight of my um, my interface, which would be the Orion. Now here's what's cool for the for the video. I actually put two of the HDX and in, in the EQs and, and stuff that come with the Orion, which are probably some of the best I've ever heard. Like I, I, I don't know how else to describe that. I don't know if it's just the way that it works with the, the interface. I don't know, but it sounds really analog. So what we do there is we go out of 7 and 8, and then that routes um, to the line out. So the effect's going to the line out. Well, what's the line out? It's the summing. So I can push it a little bit harder out the summing. So what's really cool about that is it gives me a little bit more control over the EQ. I can push it a little harder, and I can make it actually sound a little bit more analog than if a guy was just going out of his, his converter and then back in and, and capturing or, you know, and so forth. So... The thing is, is I made a video about inserts. So you can run an insert by going out of your interface into a piece of gear, out of that, back into your interface. What I started to realize is, is having a little more flexibility and control outside the box is, is a good thing. Because you're, you're not just hitting this. Um, you're actually hitting like a summing module. And then you can push it harder. And then you can, you can adjust it with like the SSL here has a mix level on it and you can turn it down so you're really driving it and and that's where a lot of the classic records that you hear through the years that's what they did to get the sound they they pushed it out into like an ssl you know 4000 and they drove that ssl um and then and then time goes on and then you don't need this huge format console unless you're doing like a big movie or something like that so they started sectioning this thing so you could just get stuff like the ssl sigma things like that i would say if you don't have a summing box do, do you need one that, that's up to you you have to find your sound. So with this video, don't say jump on the bandwagon and go, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that, I need that. But if you're trying to master a record and you're trying to do it on a budget, I'm going to show you some cool, cool plugins to do that. So, you know, if you're trying to compete against the landers of the world, and, and I really want you guys to understand something, it does seem that you know analog hardware, the stuff in this rack, is going to do a better job, okay? It is. And the reason being is is the same thing I just mentioned. If we ran into you know two Neve 1073s, pushed it into an SSL, the SSL hit the the better maker to refine it, the better maker hit the Rupert Neve, and then we finish it off with a Mog, it, it's going to sound incredible. And and you have to tip your hat to all the designers that made that possible for me as an engineer to do. But you know it is the it is the time in the in the in the audio business where a guy goes, dude, I I, I don't really. It's, 
it's not really where I'm trying to go right now. I'm just trying to make something happen with what I have. So let's talk about some plugins. Everybody can can afford a plugin. Everybody can you know go out of their way and buy this. So I know that was a long-winded speech, but I really had to set up the video for what this is about. It's not about um, you know trying to build your your mastering rig at home. It's just about different textures, different colors, different vibes. So the first thing I want to show you is the better maker i want to talk now you're hearing the better maker off i sort of disappeared there so i want to i want to show you what the better maker is it really is a um it's an eq that does what it does amazing it does it so pristine that I've never heard of Paul Tech like it. It doesn't have vacuum tubes. It's not meant to be this this tube saturation warm low end. It's supposed to be a Paul Tech that, that can literally drive the bass up, but attenuate it and really refine it. So listen to it. I'll show you real quick. So we're we're gonna set this thing back to zero. So check this out. You can go into this plug-in in the way that I'll I'll just zero it out. So I'll, I'll just add the plugin. But what the plugin does for all you new to the Better Maker line is now that's set back to zero. Okay, but this plugin can actually control the hardware. So if you have a Pro Tools session, you put it on there, and now you can put it on your master bus, and then whatever whatever channel you put it on, it doesn't. It's not dependent on that channel. So don't think of it like a plugin. Think of it like a controller, and then you can take. And you can make your adjustments. The other cool thing about the Better Maker, the MK2 has MS mode. I'll talk about that with some other plugins, but we're just going to work with stereo right now. And I'm going to show you what the Paul Tech sounds like on this. So here we go. Without further ado, after all my talking. So this is a skinny sounding record. Okay, it sounds cool. Now, Here's the thing. Sounds cool, but it, it just uh, it's lacking low and it's lacking like a like a attractive high end. So I turned it down so we can add some depth. So here's the Paltech. Now look on the screen here, how much I'm actually adding, like 11 dB. Now I can widen it. So what I like about the the actual better maker is like I'm like dude I love the hundred hurt man I love the hundred hurt but um, I I just feel like it still needs kick I I don't know if the kick's there and a lot of times in mastering this happens so let's turn that back on you notice how like tss, 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 I got so it wouldn't sound good on my voice um, here's the thing so in mastering you get into something and you're like man I like what I did to the hundred I like what I did to the um, the 4k I brought all this energy out but it's still not there it it doesn't have kick and this is when mastering sessions can get into some serious time um, a lot of the things to think about in this world if you're gonna be an engineer and that's what you want to do for a living is the ability to record at home sometimes can lead to really long projects um, and, and the good news is, is, you know, studios like mine, we make a living doing this, okay? We make a living helping people achieve a professional sound, um, and that's why a lot of our gear is geared towards that, no pun intended. But, um, so let, let's listen to this. Now, there's an EQ. So there's actually three EQs on here. There's the, well, it's actually four: a Paul Tech Low, Paul Tech High, EQ One, which is which is pretty much a sweepable EQ. Um, so listen to EQ One when we find it. Listen to this. So so I found the low end. Now now watch this. Now I can find the snare.
That's incredible. Okay, that's incredible. And for you level matching guys, don't don't like freak out right now um, because I could turn that down, but it would be down here with the with the better maker. So that's with it. That's without it. So so to the level guys out there, something I've never understood about level matching is, yeah, you got to make sure it sounds good at that level. Now, I sound horrible coming through this thing, which is not really what the goal was. Um, I was focusing on the instrumental. But what I want to get at is is a level match, if you're, if you're not in the ballpark, I think we're trying to make thrill. So as a mastering engineer, I'm so used to listening to it as I'm leveling it. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I listen that way. So I don't, I've never really been good at, um, you know, leveling it back down and saying, what did, what did it do? I never engineered that way. So um, some people do, and they're amazing engineers. I'm not saying that that's wrong. But when you don't have a good source to start and it's really muffled and really just not there yet, um, it's very easy to to not really concern yourself with the volume changing so much. So, so we're, we're creating thrill. Sometimes it is absolutely 100% correct that you can create thrill from turning something up. For example, I could take this, which was one of the plugins I wanted to show you. I could, I could do this, take everything else off, hit this thing. So if I was going to EQ, I would probably work in tangent with these as I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, so now we're like, okay, Doug, now you can really see what this is going to do. So add this better maker, and let's see what it does when we're driving it into a limiter. And then the limiter off. So, so if you really want to, you know, see how your mix is going to translate, sometimes you can put a limiter on, um, just to see what it's going to do. See if you have too much bass. See if you have this. Now, I'm not listening to my normal listening. I'm, I don't master with headphones. Um, this is just for the video purposes, so I don't feed back through my own monitors. I have this set up strategically just for this, so you can just get the the feed, and and I don't have to edit as much. Um, but here we go. So you just heard the better maker. So we'll take that out of the equation. Now now we have a MOG. So I'm going into the analog pieces, and then we're going to get into the plugins. But the, the MOG is, is very similar, but listen to its top end when I push it. It's really cool. Crazy, right? Better maker. Mog. So the mog, the mog's like driven past the point of oblivia right now, um, and I still feel like I could add 40 decibels to it. It's it's insane. This is an insane box. Um, this is a very musical EQ. This is a very musical EQ. Now look at the tangent between the two. Nah, I can't do that because then it'd be it'd be disrespectful to the other stuff we're about to do. Um, 
so that's the MOG. The MOG has air band. It has sub band. Now those two two knobs are really, really, really important. And that's two big parts of the EQ spectrum, that low sub stuff. And I don't necessarily, if you really think about it, it's not just the sub. Okay, it's not just the boom. It's actually the whole low end perception that I would consider that. So it's it's really narrow in, in the way that, that uh, uh, MOG, um, what, I think it's Cliff. Clifford, I think. So forgive me if it's not. But the way that they design this, it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And the headroom on it's fantastic. What that means is, is I can really drive a lot of audio into this EQ and not worry about it, you know, distorting or crapping out on me. Um, in short, that's what that means. So it can really handle a lot of info. It tag teams well with the SSL. And you hear this all over rec records. I mean, you really do. So now you've heard two outboard pieces um let's talk about my favorites in the box like as far as mastering and then i'll talk about my favorites as far as tracking mixing editing so the one that i use a lot is called a bx digital and you can see that i got it set pretty heavy right now for the video so watch what it's been doing since we've started So, so it might look drastic on here. Um, I wouldn't say that I do that on, on a lot of masters. Um, I probably don't do it on any. But this plugin is cool because in mastering, it has a lot of functional um, stuff for a mastering engineer. Number one, it has a mono maker. When I hear a song that just does not sound right, a lot of times it could have too much sub information. It might have, um, you know, a little bit of a stereo image or a guy screwed that up and, and, and widened it so far that the actual bass pretty much phases. Um, you know, different tricks with bass, things like that. So the mono maker can allow me to just make whatever frequency, wherever I set it, and down below that. So 200 hertz and down, if you look at the screen right now, would be mono. So sometimes that's just what a song needs. You're, you're really flipping the stereo image and if you listen to it with a with a really great monitoring system you can hear it now if you're listening on a cheap system or something like that that's a hard it's a hard thing to hear the mono maker so if you have a, an accurate stereo image in your in your studio you're going to get a lot of benefit out of this it could even be as simple as 80 hertz in below i just want the sub information to be in the middle that's a trick i'm giving you a lot of tricks in this video so if you think about that, that that knob, that's a complex thing to do if you don't have that knob. And that's why we th we're thankful for plugins because if I didn't have that, I, I would have to do a, lo a little bit of routing. I'd have to EQ this, take this, maybe sum this to mono. Let's just sum the sub to mono. And that's, that's some time-sensitive stuff. Um, you know, a guy's paying you for all this stuff and you're like, what are you doing, man? And, you know, you get yelled at or something. But they, they did a great job of putting this on here. Another cool feature on this is the gain scale. You might find that you EQ'd it too much, which happens a lot when you first get into audio. You end up EQing stuff way too much. Um, this will allow you to change the whole curve. Now, what EQ outside the box does that, I don't know. But you can change the gain scale of the curve. So, so if I reset this, and the coolest feature about it, which the Better Maker does this too, so I'll give it credit, but they, they sort of glorify that out of the box because it's a lot harder to do. But in the plug-in world, mid-side has become pretty common. You know, companies like Plugin Alliance pretty much made their whole company off of this. Um, every plugin they own does this, so or every every plugin that they, they sell. So check this out. So if I go to Solo Mid... Now I'm just hitting now I can literally just listen to the mono section. That is powerful in a mastering situation because I can say what is causing it to be muffled. Now let's listen. Let's say we get the song and it's got like like this. It's like this. It sounds familiar to a lot of people's music. Trust me. Um, even this sometimes I get. So
so the middle's like this. This is the most common issue I get with hip hop, pop. And then the highs are like this, dude. They're like jammed, man. So it sounds like this. So when you get the song, it's like this. And then the sides are like that. So between the two, it's it's pinched. So if you try to turn that up in a club, what's going to end up happening is by the time it gets limited, the high end is going to be so shrill and so high. Even if it's not a shrill high end, it's still going to sound like dull and, and lifeless because you have way too much high end. And the speaker's trying to reproduce that. And, this, and the low information is, is getting sucked out of it. It's almost like taking an air hose and spraying it. If you've ever done that, that's pretty much what we're, we're perceiving. Listen to this. That's what it sounds like to me. Even more. It's like shh. So there's no body. You know, there's no depth. There's no image. So so a lot of times in this, I can say, oh, okay. You know what, dude? This guy really screwed up his 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 sides. Um, maybe we'll listen to that. Maybe we'll, we'll EQ that. He's probably over here. Um, he's probably got too much high end. Way too much. Let's listen. Now he needs more body. None of that. Yeah, we want that. And then let's shelf the, the bottom. Now it's got to bounce. So, so ju when somebody says, "Oh, do you really need? Do you really need mastering? Do you really need mixing?" Well, the fact is this: that to me went from something that was ah, that's cool, but it doesn't have that bounce. It doesn't have that feel. Now we'll probably refine that a lot more than that. Um, but that very subtle change on that curve really just changed the whole perception of the sides. Um, when in doubt, you might want to take some of the sub information out of the sides, unless you're doing movie and film and stuff like that, where, where you're using a low end audio effect and then the compression has to be different. But in a, in a record, if you're not sure, sometimes, uh, the best thing you could do is take a lot of the sub information out of the sides. Um, one of the big tricks for a lot of mi mixing engineers is they boost um, like the 400 to 500, 600. So they'll give it a stereo image. Um, they'll give it an image on the sides because the mid range for some reason to us sounds wider. Like if you listen to a record, like a hi hat doesn't sound wide. Like the real high top stuff doesn't sound wide. It's the mid range that sounds wide. We can focus on that and we can we can image that better on a lot more systems. So you know, a lot of systems don't go all the way up to 20k. You know, a guy's doing like some awesome stereo image trick at 20k. I mean, you're really not going to hear it unless you're adding it for mastering purposes, which is a totally different thing. But the thing is, is this plugin does this very well so now once we have the sides right you don't have to use it this way either by the way but then we can go to the mids and say man he's got a boomy bassy mix hate it we can mess with the bass so we want a little more of that let's see what he's got let's pretend like this was like this there's a snare say let's leave the top for the sides let's see if I can contradict myself let's add some of that tint I'm doing this for a purpose by the way because some people will be like dude that doesn't sound good well watch when you put it in context it's energy Let's go to 200. Here's another one. Mud sometimes is good. Some mud in the middle. 
Sides got mid range. Totally different song. Now you got to be careful though, okay? Um, I'm starting to hear it sound a little phasey, which which can happen. I mean, if you start really diving into it, so that's why this knob was here. Check it out. Oh wow! And it's at 4K. So anyways, you know, that that's going to need a lot more work. But that's the Brainworks Digital V3. That's version 3. They make they make older versions, stuff like that. But that's a really cool plugin. The next one on my list, I'm going to skip this one, but this was more for the, the video purposes. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to skip it. But this is this is a common practice. This was what I was trying to show you with the uh, the Better Maker. I was showing you, but this is a Paltec. I mean, so check this out. If we put this Paltec on, but I'm going to show you a really cool one here in a minute. So if I push play, so we'll boost the 100. Five K. So since I did that, let me rewind back to the Paltec on the Better Maker, so you can hear that. Same thing. Let me cut it. Let me match it. So I got about 4.5. Then I have 5K. That's some crispy stuff, dude. I, I mean, if you're the clap just came to the party on that one. It was like, snap. I'm sorry. I got excited about that. Um, let me turn this off. And now back to the this one. It, it, sorry for cutting and stopping and starting, but I, I hear something. I want to tell you what I'm hearing. I, I hear like I still need to do something to the snare. Like, listen to it. Now this is a perception video, so watch this. Mog off. That's one of those EQs, you know, when somebody says, hey, Doug, uh, you got to let it grow on you and you get used to it. It's the same thing. There's another EQ company that I really want to tip my hat to. It's uh, um, Kush. Kush Audio. We have uh, Freddie. Um, he does more tracking and stuff. And that's the other studio that I work out of a ton. And uh, he's got all the Kush stuff. I had a Kush uh, parallel EQ, but it's the same thing. It's They make a Kush uh, um, mastering sort of focus mode and things like that. It's like two knobs. Um, and it's like that. Okay. An EQ that does that, when you take it off, you go, what happened? Like did, did a speaker break? You know you're you have something powerful, and that's one of those EQs. So we're gonna leave that on so we can hear this. So it's in the contain like when you have them running in in um, you know in line with one another, you start to realize what works. It's another thing about being a mastering uh, studio and learning. We're all learning. I don't care if you're the greatest studio on the planet or you just started yesterday. We're all learning. So check this out. So let's listen to the the better maker and th and this is what we do in t hold on one second what's that snare focus on the string too now the plug in
Better maker. Both. It's pretty incredible. Okay, so it is not uncommon to use multiple Paltex, multiple EQs to achieve what you want. Um, that was sort of the reason I sort of did that. And now we have three EQs running. We have a Mog, we have a Better Maker, and we have a Puig Tech um, from Waves. And uh, I think it's Joseph Puig, I believe. So listen to that. I mean, it's starting to sound like, wow, that's pretty cool, Doug. Good sound. But when we take it off, once again, this is where... It starts to sound muffled and dull, and a lot of people's records at home are like this. So EQ is a big part of recording. So let's go on to the next one. I know I'm getting long-winded, but I think if you're an audio guy, you love this kind of video, because I do. So this one, it just made the cut, because this one, I used to own the, the hardware piece, and I wasn't really fond of it when I bought it. I was like, dude, I just it's it's a lot of, a lot of money for something like this. But then as I got older... I got a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, understanding of the business. Um, I, I got to work with, you know, clients and, and artists that were like very, very, let's just put it this way, very great artists that knew exactly what they wanted, how they wanted it. So it's a different workflow. Um, they, they had records done by great mixing guys and, and I was like... I'm afraid to touch it, you know, but then as you learn, you live and you learn, and, and, and I shouldn't have said that because somebody's going to get that wrong, but there's great ways to really make a record sound phenomenal with, with tools like this. So this one, and I'll leave this on so you can hear it, um, but watch how this lifts. So the combo between the Mog, the Better Maker, and this, and even if you don't have this stuff, it still sounds cr incredible. Check it out. Listen to this 80. So I hope you can hear that. I mean, it was 84 hertz, so listen to this on some decent, you know, decent system here. But 84 hertz, like, just filled that in. It sounded like totally night and day because I was missing some of the boom. Watch when I take it off. I like the kick, but there's no boom. It's going, bah, 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 bah. you know, it's like, it, and I wasn't trying to act like a chicken, but. It, it's 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 grabbing i got 100 hertz on this sounds really really deep and full and impactful and all that good stuff but man watch when i add this 84 it's really hitting those strings listen so that's a pretty cool plugin right We'll keep moving now as a lot of people ask me this question and this is a great time to actually answer this question is when somebody says what eq would you buy doug the honest answer is is it's a multi it's a multiple um multiple eq job okay there, there's not one that just does it all. You know, if I just had a better maker, took away all my plugins, took away everything else, I would probably be a disappointed person. I'd be like, oh, it's awesome, man. My records are cool and everything, but, but I wouldn't have anything else to, to advance the sound of it. If I just had a Mog, you know what? I think I, I, I told a few people this. I'd be, I was like, dude, that's a really great EQ to, to get because it can work well on vocals. It can work well on the two bus. It can work well um, on a lot of things. And it's something that's, that's missing in audio. So the Dangerous Max EQ, when I first bought it, I didn't have it. It's a compliment. Okay, this is an EQ that you want when you have a nice refining, uh, you know, a, a, an EQ that can really drive 
an, a, an EQ that can really make something happen. Now, whether you want to use the in the box or the out of box, that's that's your your call. But that is a complementing EQ. That is a mastering EQ. There's not a doubt in my mind about it. Because if you just put that on a basic track that's not tracked right with the right preamps, it's a muffled sounding record. That EQ is going to sound like trash. But when you put that on something that's recorded well, it sounds pristine, it's been hit pretty good with some nice hardware, and then you put that on there, it's going to sound like a champion. So when somebody gives you an opinion of something, you got to watch who you're listening to because that EQ, this is a prime testimony to what, what, we're trying to, what I'm trying to tell you in this video. That EQ after multiple pieces sounds brilliant brilliant i guess that's the word if you if you start from scratch with some some really cheap sounding records or something like like i could show you right now watch i'll muffle the microphone so let's let's do this so so let's the guy the guy gives me a, a recording like this right you might think i'm an absolute nutcase but that setting doesn't sound that good anymore does it so your eq in this on your voice you're like man i don't know dude that thing doesn't sound that good Okay, um, yeah. What I'm getting at, listen to me. What I'm trying to tell you is you can screw stuff up. That that was the whole. I wasn't trying to be a jerk. Hey, man. hey guys, what's what's going on, guys? No, I wasn't trying to be a jerk. What I was trying to tell you is there's an absolute thing that a lot of people will write something off because they're not really understanding it with other gear. And I think that's one of the biggest things you should learn as an engineer. Like, like man, if I push a Neve into a um, into this Manly here, it sounds fantastic. And that's what makes you great at what you do. Um, you know, and, and I just wanted to share that with people. What I'm saying is, is that's the kind of EQ that could get voted off the island real quick because it's really not it's a complimenting EQ. It's not like a like a surgical tracking EQ, which we're about to show you, man. But here's the next one. This one's, uh, you know, courtesy of Sean. Uh, Sean Waters, he, he showed me this, and he's like, Doug, you got to try this. But this is a cool plug-in. Watch this. So I'm going to try to use this plug-in um, to add that low mid range after these two. And then I'm going to I'm gonna hurry this up because I'm going into about an hour long video here. So watch when I push play on this. Like, let's try to find the high mids and see if I can can grab the, uh, you know, grab that that energy out of the uh, the strings and things. Check this out, man. This thing's sweet. <laughs> incredible mod off it's a combo thing man and it's a volume thing I gotta be fair to it let's give it a little more rumble It's a totally different song. Watch when I take all these off. Wow. Okay, first and foremost, I get it to all you level matching people. Yeah, I'm not level matching one bit. Um, but to me, that's not really important when, when you're hearing something go from here to this huge image. Just trust me on this. That's a totally different image. If I level match it back and you don't know what to listen for, you're going to be deceived and you're going to go, well, what am I doing? No, I don't put the before and afters. I don't. That's why I don't put before and afters on my website because I. It, it's like... I just want people to hear it real life, what just happened, wow, that sounded good, and man, it brought brought thrill to me, because I think at the end of the day, you want to be a great engineer, learn how to capture somebody's life performance, 
Okay, their their emotions, their feel, their uh, does it have that that punch that it needs? Does it have snap? Does it have the image? It, it, what's the song saying? And, and a lot of times the song will tell you where to go. Um, you know, that might sound a little psychotic to some people, but that's the truth. You'll 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 listen to it and go, man, this thing just really sounds dull, or man, this thing. I wish the kick drum would sound better, or man, the 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 vocals really weak, or and it's not it's not judgmental to the actual parts of the song um that's what engineering is it's to better what's already there so here's the last one that i'm going to show you so i've got through the diamond the danger it's not the last one i'm sorry but i hope you guys are really liking this i know it's a little longer than expected but i I talk a lot um this is my favorite man this has been my go-to eq in the box for years because it's so transparent check it out totally different it's not it's not a Paul tech but listen to this Sounds finished. Listen that off. It could use a little more boom, but we're gonna add the boom. Wow, too much boom. Turn your speakers down, people. And that's the point. Um, in conjunction, sometimes you can really, really uh, screw stuff up, like I just did by activating that dangerous. So if I wanted to get rid of this and add the dangerous, this might be a better sound for the song. Check it out. totally different song. Or this. Now that sounds skinny, okay? So it's it's a weird thing. Audio is a weird thing. So so which one gives you more, you know, more of that emotion that you're you're looking for if there was a vocal on here and the way that he was or she was performing, it, it would dictate okay maybe i want to use the dangerous or maybe i want to use the diamond or maybe i want to take off one of these pieces you know it does not matter i'm just showing you these eqs to show you performance with eqs so let's go out of that one the linear eq now you hear that that's a super super transparent eq um i'm going to do a brief one on this super musical i use this a lot when it comes to like modern pop modern punch modern rock christian music christian uh mainstream music stuff like that um this just always seems to sound like it it always gives it it gives it a refining image it's almost like um focused i guess so listen to this Really well with the vocal, uh, dude. That's a really good one in the vocal range. If you if you have a muffled sound, this one's great. Now the actual Elysia uh, Music Q is is expensive. Um, I think it's like ten grand. So um, good luck with that. Um, you might want to get the plug-in. But dude, Plugin Alliance makes some killer stuff. I love Plugin Alliance. I don't know how I fell in love with it uh, over a lot of the other companies, but I got to show you the last one here. Give me a second. Now somebody's calling me. Great. Always calling. Hold on a second. Who is calling me? Not tonight, big dog. Um, okay. Not in the video. So here's another one I, I do want to show you. Um, as far as my two favorite dynamic processors, I have to show you this. Number one is the, the uh, linear multiband. Love it. Absolutely love it. Watch this. 
So what I'll do is with the linear multi band, I'll find like the frequency I'm not liking. Um, if somebody says, Doug, I, I don't really want you to EQ it a lot. I, I, I like the tone of it. Don't touch it. You know, so, so I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we can just grab this. Such a refining sound. I I, I don't want to go deep into the the uh, compressors on this, but dude, pick this thing up if you're trying to master. Now you can really screw this up, dude. So you better know what you're doing. Don't do this and then send it to me. Watch, please don't do this. Sounds like I blew an eardrum. I get that a lot, by the way. That was my biggest mistake when I first started engineering. I thought I had to do this. There's nothing that bothers me more than that. It's it's so compressed to the point of oblivion that it's not e you can compress stuff even further than that, but if you don't do it right and you just take like a plug-in like that and just drive it down because you think you're evening something out, it's not the right way to use it. You're you're literally running the risk of totally changing your whole record. Like listen to this for a little bit. It's like annoying. And I'll take it off. So it took a lot of the transient and the snap. What I'm saying is if you don't know what you're doing, this is one of the plugins that you should be very careful with. And if you are going to use it, check this out just use one of these like multi opto and just like let it sort of breathe into it just really tuck it a little bit like that that's perfect you still want it to bounce you know Okay, and then one of my favorite in-the-box limiters. I'm giving you, if you stuck around for the hour, I'm going to give you two sweet compressors. So the li the linear multiband and then the ML8000. This thing is sick, man. Um, let's, let's re... How do I reset this thing? It's sweet, but I don't know how to reset it. Anyways, we're just going to open it up again. What a great plug-in, man. Um... There's so many I could go through tonight, but this is some that I, I really like. So the ML8000 is a limiter. It's an advanced limiter. And I'm going to give you one more. So, so check this out. So you can actually EQ inside the plugin. And that's why I made the video, because it's an EQ, in my opinion. To me, I think that's probably the best sounding e the best sounding plugin I've ever used right there. Not to take anything away from all the other ones, and not because I'm just adding volume with limiting. It really does something really unique where it like totally um, makes something focused. And I, I, I've started to grow to love that sound because I notice a lot of things that come my way or either they got a little bit of beef or mud or they're, they're saturated or they're heavy or they're, they're thick. And it's like, man, I really like the sound of this plugin. That's a prime example of the sound of a plugin right there. It has a sound to it, and it's a really unique sound. I think um, you probably heard it on Coldplay's vocals. Um, I know Michael Brower, I watched a video on him, and, and he was using it. 
It, it's it's a phenomenal sound. It's really good at at cleaning up a record that has a lot of mud, um, and, and it's really great at finishing stuff. So those were my two ML eight thousand in the linear multi band. Now, I'm just going for the gusto, man. The hour and fifteen minute video here, and then we'll we'll come to a wrap. But check this out. My favorite plugins for the track. Oh no, no, I got to show you my last um, plugins for um, the master bus. Right here, guys. This thing is so good at what it does for lifting and cutting. And these are more Poltec based EQs. I'm showing you the Mog, the the Better Maker stuff like that, where you're you're working with the lows and the highs. You're working with the mids. But but check this thing out. So when I turn this on, listen to this. I love it. A little loud. Hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time We got to turn off the other Paul Tech. Because I'm boosting big time, boys. Let me turn off the Better Maker. That's unbelievable. <laughs> there's something about there's something about the antelope company, dude. I don't like I don't get paid by them or something because like I've been doing a lot of videos about them, but there's something that blows my mind about their their stuff. Like, I don't know what's going on over there, but um, it blows my mind. I mean, dude, that sounded humongous, like what I just heard. It was like, whoa, what's going on here? Um, which, to me, sounds, and why I had to put it in the video, it's the most lifelike analog plugins that I know of. Now, I, I'm not a UAD guy. I'm not a, you know, I have Steven Slate. I'm, I love his plugins, but they're not, they're not like usually finding their way on my stuff here. Um, but dude, the, the antelope plugins, number one, the way that they route, because you're hitting, actually you're hitting the plugin and the plugins driving the converter and the converters driving the summing where you could actually track it like a piece of hardware, which I'm used to. And, and that's phenomenal. Dude, I would put that on any master that I ever do. It is so good. And that is one of the most um, pristine and, and biggest sounding low ends of the video. If you rewind back and go back and back and back, it's just, it's awesome. Now, this leads me to my favorite EQ when it comes to tracking. Um, we have one in the box loaded up, and we have one actually outside the box, which is right there. Now, what I want to show you is these are my two favorite EQs. This S, this XEQ is one of my favorites um, because it is so good at what it does. If I solo this, check it out. And it has parallel. Check this out. That's unbelievable to me. Awesome. Now here's the other one. So we're going to just use this. And then I'm going to get the video done with. Because you guys got to go eat or something, you know. Your wife's yelling at you. Or you got to go to bed. I don't know. Okay. So... This is the SSL channel, one of the most iconic mixing, uh, you know, companies on the planet. I'm really hitting it though. Better watch myself. It's so cool. And that's why you should get your, your record mixed. Um, um, the reason being is because if you if you create 
energy on that particular stem now you can really screw somebody's stuff up too I've, I've done it in my early years i i i was like dude i didn't know what you wanted um you know be specific when you send stuff like i really just want you to to finalize it touch it up make, you know really hit it through the nice gear and stuff like that or i really want you to just go to work man and a lot of people let me do that and and, and they're actually um what's really crazy is most of the the um what would you call it? The the guys that are sort of seasoned, that have been around, been there and done it, they really let me push it. The guys that are really sensitive, like myself included, when I first got into mixing, I was like, oh, don't touch it, don't touch it. And and I finally found a guy, when I was like 16 years old, I found a guy that like really got it, you know. And and I hope I feel like, I hope I, I fill that void like he did for a lot of people that watch. Um I was like, dude, you made this sound amazing. And I was just young in this, but he knew what he was doing and he got it to sound awesome. And I, like I said, I hope I can do that for, for anybody that sends their stuff to me. But the SSLG channel, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the real one. Um, so we'll bypass this. Now watch how this boosts. So I, I boost this around 1.97. Um, I believe I have it on 9 and 10. Hopefully it doesn't need routed. Now there it is. So check this out. So... Up. It's unbelievable, dude. Now the compressor. Off. Okay, this sounds good in context. The SSL EQ, why you see those big boards is when you stack those EQs, there's something insanely magical that happens. I don't know how to describe it. You can tell if you're really good at listening, listen to the image of it. Listen to how it just seems like it catches your attention and you're like, but here's the good news. If I put that in the mix... It sounds like that, but I can still hear everything else around it. This EQ sounds good on everything. That's why you find it on all the SSL boards. So if I listen to this one more time, you can change the curve. Sounds like a lot of records that I've heard. That's a mixing style. I mean, driving that thing, getting the sound you want out of it, just not not taking any doubt in your mind that you're messing somebody's stuff up and just going for it. And once you got it sounding good, leave it. Um, now, in the box, if I take this off, you don't get exact. But you get pretty darn good. That's where I really hear the difference in the mids. Listen to this. So, so what I mean by the mids is this one sounds like it's got headroom for days. What I mean is I could turn those knobs past the point until I broke them off and keep going. And I'm like, yeah, that is very important when you're making a record, by the way. Like, you're like, dude, I wish I could get that guitar to just a little. <sighs> On the plug-in, it, it just does that. I'm sorry. It does. Like, I can't push this as hard. But watch this. Once again, one of my favorite companies. Um, check this out. You're going to love this, man. Let's turn this one off. Turn this on. If I could turn it on. Where is it, bro? Oh, sorry. My bad. Wrong channel. Sounds more like it to me. It it gets it gets a little of that tinniness. 
I'm not gonna lie. So let's flip back to the SSL. They're not the same EQ either. I wasn't trying to do a shootout video. So anyways, um, the antelope stuff, dude, I would mix a whole entire record with those plugins. That's, that is the debate. When somebody says, what do, what do you think? Should I get hardware? You got to know what you're using it for. You know what I mean? That was like the purpose of this video. Not only to show you some awesome EQ, some awesome tools as an engineer, but it was to actually fill you in and let you realize, like, um, if you're if you're new to this, like, dude, I can do this. Like, let me find, let me take plugins a little more serious. Let me let me figure out what plugins I like. Let me let me take it. And now here's the good news, and I'm going to end the video like that. If you're if you have no money except for just a doll, dude, stock plugins are awesome. Okay, what I'm saying to a, to an extent, the actual channel strip. Let's use it on something else. Let me see if I can find another stem. But dude, this is a kick. This is a pro limiter on this. That's another one I didn't show you. For the record, this is for the HD users, so I didn't really show it to you. But that thing's sweet. Um, let me turn that down. But this is just a basic channel strip. Basic. This. In this go a long way okay they do they're okay they're fine they they sound great I wouldn't really it depends I wouldn't put it I'm not even gonna say that if it needs it I've found myself slapping that on the end and turning something down real quick and I'm like that sounds sweet listen to the sound of it watch let's get rid of that honkiness Let's get some boom. Good tracking EQ, man. Here you go. It's a little tinny, but... But a really cool, unique channel strip. It's got a refined sound. No doubt about it. But the point I'm trying to make here, and I'm going to end the video because this is long. I'm like an hour and eight minutes right now. The whole point of this was no matter what you use, no matter where you're at, no matter your financial outlook, no matter your whatever it is, if you want to engineer any tool that you find an attraction to and you like and you feel that it's your sound or you it, it just I like that one or I like this one that's really what's sculpting you as a musician as an artist pay attention to it you know what I mean and, and seek it and, and, and find a, a common ground with each one of these you know say wow this one I like the high end this one I like the low end so to answer all the mastering guys questions the guys that are aspiring to be mastering engineers or master at home there isn't one size fits all that is the same and the very reason that I've I've you know not understood the way that the world's going with you know one size fits all one size does this it's not um, you know it's not really an art anymore if you do that so everybody has a chance to make something great whether it's a plug-in whether it's hardware but I will be honest if I take this off and this off that's not my sound I don't like it anymore as I drop the mic <laughs> there's something about those two EQs I enjoy and, and there's more you know it always I've had massive passives I've had uh, Avalon's I've had uh, you name it man I've, I've had them and and I just for some reason work well with this rack that I have now and um, it might change next week I don't know so my name is Doug Jenkins dude I appreciate every last one of you for watching this um, hopefully you learned a lot because I did um, you know, just tweaking plugins and really listening to them like this in context was, was good for me as well. So, um, enjoy 
making music. Don't let people hate on you. Don't get ticked off because some guy's a jerk. And and don't let people use you. I mean, that's my advice to anybody out there that's that's making music um, or engineering for somebody. If you're still in your beginning stages of engineering, be honest with people. Be like, look, dude, I'm new to it, but I'm going to save you a bunch of money and I'll and I'll tweak some stuff. That was that was something that I wish if if somebody would have came into my life and, and said, Hey Doug, man, why don't you just take it slow and work on what you're good at? But now you do have to know a lot about a lot to get paid to do this. And I thank God that I, that I'm, um, you know, making a living doing this. And I, and I hope and pray that, that if you're out there watching me and that's what you want to do, I hope that that happens for you. So once again, my name is Doug Jenkins. I mix in master.com, the letter end, uh, the letter N, um, and hopefully you guys, you know, send me something. I love working on music, okay? I love when, I don't care if you just started yesterday, you, you've you been doing it for 40 years. I It doesn't matter to me. I just love working on music. So we'll see you guys. God bless every last one of you. And, and thanks for continuing to support me and, and be patient with me in, in the videos. Peace. I got to go eat. Why do I keep saying that, dude? I just ate. All right, man. We'll see you guys.